Hi everyone and welcome back to Dev Show. This is the 32nd episode of Dev Show. And for those of you that is the very first time that you're joining us, Dev Show is a weekly show and on each episode we have one speaker and one topic that we will have a deep dive in it. My name is Sherry List and I am your host today together with my good colleague Rasmus Jack who is finally back from vacation. <laughs> Hi Rasmus, how are you doing today? Hi Sherry, I'm awesome. So yeah, yeah, I'm back three weeks and call it vacation one more time. It wasn't a vacation, right? It was, I was off work, but I was doing other work, renovating so, a house. So <laughs> Oh, renovating a house. So yeah. maybe so, you should tell us about your new castle. <laughs> I'm in the dungeon right now, as you can see, raw walls. <laughs> but uh, the other floors is is looking much better. Uh, oh, okay. yeah. So work in progress. How are you, Sherry? I'm fine. Uh, finally, we have some sun, uh, even though that this morning the car was frozen. So, but that's this. The sun is there, and I'm happy that I have my co-host back. That is uh... happy to be back, and, <laughs> awesome. and 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 this is the thirty second episode of the Dev Show, right? So so we are we are moving far far along. Yes, yes, we do, and I know everybody is waiting to hear about the today's topic, which is pretty awesome. But before I handing it and to uh, Rosmus to talk about the topic. Um, I want to mention to you all that we uh, you all can ask your question from the speaker and um, by typing it in the chat doesn't matter if you are uh, watching us from learn tv from facebook from youtube twitch you can just type the question we are going to highlight it for the for the speaker and um thank you Rasmus, for highlighting the the link i want to mention to you all that even though that we really want you to to interact with each other in the chat but we want you all to familiarize yourself with us with our code of conduct which the link is highlighted here and it's pretty simple we really want you all to be mindful and uh and mindful of, and be respectful of each other and uh also during the during the show we really want you to ask the question and uh we're going to actually hand out one swag box to the best question so try your chance and uh and then ask the question there as well and all of you are going to get an azure heroes learner badge which i'm going to talk about it later on and um, so i don't want to talk more maybe rosmus you can tell us a little bit about today's uh, episode definitely so maybe some of you have seen our speaker today unboxing uh, a thing uh, on uh, linkedin but we're gonna learn the title of the session today is ai at the edge and a lab around uh, as a percept and uh, yeah that was my son sorry about that uh, and the dev toolkit uh, so what we're gonna learn today is what is as a percept getting up and, and running uh, to AI at the edge, training and deploying our co own, our own custom vision models. We were just talking about sign language before we got live, and uh, yeah, and then interpreting uh, the data feed from the device to the cloud. And today we are going to have uh, actually an, uh, a friend of mine uh, for for some time. Uh, so I'm excited to to get uh, to welcoming uh, our Maltese friend living in germany carl welcome to dev show how are you carl thanks a million and i'm, I'm great i'm here in munich at the moment uh, yeah it's uh, a sunny day for once <laughs> yeah that's nice great um, and and you work at microsoft maybe you can tell us what exactly you do at microsoft sure sure i mean i started at microsoft uh, 13 years ago it seems seems like ages ago now um, I was a developer evangelist at Microsoft. Uh, previous to that, I was a Microsoft certified trainer, and I still am. Um, and I always taught anything to do with .NET and anything to do with Microsoft. Um, throughout my time at Microsoft, I was a, an architect. I've been an evangelist. I've been a technical solutions professional. And more recently, I was in engineering uh, as part of Fast Track. And, uh, moved now into what we call the one commercial partner organization. So 
I'm a cloud solution architect working on telcos, and uh, I work with the global telcos. Um, so, you know, the likes of Vodafone, Deutsche Telekom, NTT, et cetera. I uh, hope I haven't left anybody out who's important, and if I have, I'm sorry. Um, and yeah, based in Munich, um, and been doing that now for the last three years. And that involves technical enablement sessions like today, uh, working with customers on big deals, et cetera. So, so you call yourself a Microsoft Certified Trainer as well for 16 years. What is special mm -hmm. about that and what do you do when you are a Certified Trainer? What can you do? So as a, as a Certified Trainer, you're kind of authorized to train Microsoft technologies. Um, I did that when I started off on Visual Basic um, 16 years ago. And now I deliver a lot of Azure presentations more than anything. Um, I wouldn't say my coding capabilities allow me to become a production coder. Don't don't employ me as a software development engineer. Um, I can I can do demos, and I think as a trainer, I'm certified to do demos, but not to write real code. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is uh, that is fun. So I know actually you and me we have one thing in in common. So I want to ask you a question. Maybe you can tell us dogs or cats. I'm a dogs person. I've, I've just bought a border collie. And uh, yeah, she's two months old and we're training her. Yeah, what fun. Six o'clock in the morning, you wake up. Yeah, I won't describe the rest. <laughs> yeah, I've been there. I've done that. Uh, Rasmus, you never told us dogs or cats. Nothing. I'm, I'm no, 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 no pets. But if I were to choose, I would actually also like a dog, and actually the same, uh, the same type as you have, Carl, a border collie. But my wife is allergic, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> great. So, Carl, you are doing a lot uh, for the community as well. Uh, you have, uh, you're doing events. Uh, anything you want to highlight that you have been done or doing? Uh, in in the in the yeah, recent future that you want to yeah, highlight yeah, for, I mean, for everyone I've, I've presented at you know I'm, I'm basically a speaker for hire so if anybody wants a, a, a decent presenter I've uh, presented in Lithuania with Jimmy Wales from Wikipedia and um, that was about 2,000 people and uh, last year I was you know presenting for the iGaming space uh, Malta is very big in iGaming some 200 companies registered there and they had the founder of Shazam come over. Um, so I got to meet him and, you know, talk about how he started up Shazam. And it's, it's kind of cool when you share the stage with some of these people that you look up to and you get to actually ask them questions uh, face to face. Um, yeah, apart from that, I, I present at Microsoft events um, internally. I think the audiences are probably a bit bigger than some of our external events, as Rasmus would know. Um, usually a couple of thousand people uh, um, at those events. Yeah, exactly. So, so you are you on mute, Jerry? Do you want to say something? No, I was just saying that maybe we can, um, we can actually start the presentation. Awesome. And at this point, we can say that the stage is yours, and I am going to share your screen. And for uh, all of you that you are watching us, remember you can ask your question, and we are going to highlight it for call later on at the Q and A session. So thanks, Sherry. Thanks, Rasmus. Yeah, so you you are all mine now for the next uh, few minutes till the end of the session. But please just interrupt. Don't wait till the end. I'm, I'm quite happy to take questions as they come along. Um, I'm only going to show six slides um, in typical non Microsoft style. I won't kill you with PowerPoint. Um, what I'll try and kill you with is demos. Um, and on that note, um, demos can backfire. So, you know, there's a lot of risk doing demos, but I think if I show you the actual platform and how easy it is to use, it's much, much more valuable than, you know, 45 minutes of theory. So some of you may not know what Azure Percept is. Um, Azure Percept was codenamed Santa Cruz up until recently. And it's a set of devices that we will talk about to allow you to do AI at the edge. And some of the challenges with doing AI at scale, especially at the edge, are how do you actually build a platform which is easy to embrace all of the core functionality of getting your model trained, getting your model into an execution environment on supported hardware? How do you actually make that hardware 
um, able to be rapidly updated and deployed at scale across 100 devices or 1,000 devices. So it's important to have a, a hardware stroke software platform. And this is where we call Percept takes you from silicon to service to get that end-to-end -end experience. And of course, it's not just about getting that device up and running. It's how do you keep it running? How do you patch it? How do you maintain those models? What's the DevOps cycle like? What's security like? So Azure Percept is this holistic vision of Microsoft to take silicon to service and allow you to have AI happening at the edge. Why is AI important at the edge? Well, if you take things like 5G and low latency experiences, when you have AI at the edge, you unlock some interesting scenarios. You could have things like worker safety and being able to detect if a worker goes into an area which he shouldn't be working in, or is he wearing his hard hat when he's in that area? You can do all sorts of things like control robotics with gestures, for example. So having this low latency interaction between your AI model sitting on an edge device and being able to communicate in real time with the environment you're in is super important and critical. Now, Microsoft comes from an enterprise uh, perspective at this. So we developed Azure some eight to nine years ago as a public cloud. But since then, we've kind of brought the cloud or the hyperscale cloud closer to the edge. And what we mean by that is getting out of our data center. And we released something called Azure Stack Hub, which was an edge, um, an edge appliance. You could run that on your um, uh, premises and do workloads such as containers, um, virtual machines, all sorts of interesting stuff. But it was big and it was expensive and it was heavy and hard to manage. Well, it's still there and it's a lot easier to manage and, and it's a lot less expensive. And we came out with things called Azure Edge Zones, which is a you know a one U unit which can sit you know inside your customer premises and bring for you a lot of that Azure capability. Those you know AKS type of um, Azure Kubernetes service and running IoT workloads. Now, going one step further to the edge, if you go right to the end, you would have something like Azure Sphere, which is a real-time operating system, which is basically a, a silicon device, which you know, can actually create and collect telemetry. And if you take one step back, you get the Azure Percept family of devices, which are basically IoT endpoints which plug into things like IoT Hub, um, Azure Custom Vision Services, Azure Speech Services, and they take that telemetry and they send it to the cloud, or it can be processed at the edge. The beauty of Percept is it does not need to be connected to Azure in order to function. And sometimes this is important for cases like latency, but also for cases where data sovereignty means that the data cannot leave Denmark, for example, or it cannot leave Malta, where I'm, where I'm from. So we talk about Azure Percept as an end-to-end -end management solution. Um, as I said before, you get a full DevOps cycle that you can wrap around this. You get full hardware root of trust, which means, you know, is the device running secure code? Has it been tampered with? Is the communication to the device secure? Are the keys stored safely? Can they be rotated when things go wrong? All of this comes as part of the package that you implement. And the great thing is you can spill these out on pilots at mass scale very, very rapidly. They're easy to train, they're easy to get set up. And we say you can go from AI at the edge to an up and running model in less than 10 minutes. And if you saw my unboxing video on LinkedIn or on YouTube, then you would have seen how quick and easy that is. Today, we're gonna go beyond that. It's also running our first ever CBL Mariner or Linux distribution that we wrote specifically for AI enabled devices and edge cases so that we can actually maintain and give back to the open source community a distribution which is geared up for, to be lightweight, super fast, super secure, running a minimal set of services in order to make sure that you've got a secure environment. And it comes with a camera and it comes with um, some audio devices, and I'll show you the devices in just a minute, but it's a lightweight edge for you to run. It looks like this. So we mount it on an 80-20 mounting rail, which means you can put this into a factory very, very quickly and stand it up. And the first thing you'll notice is the Wi-Fi enabled Azure Percept DK carrier board. And that basically has the Linux distribution on it. And all the devices are connected via USB cables to that. 
Next along the line is the Percept Vision. We used to call it Azure Eye. And then there's Azure Audio, or Azure Percept Audio, which was the Azure Ear. And of course, those produce um, models which can recognize speech and recognize vision through the camera that's enabled on them. Now, the hardware alone is not enough. You need to have Azure Percept Studio in order to manage the device from the Azure Cloud. Of course, you can SSH directly into the device if you're not connected to the cloud, but a lot of the setup and, ma and, and man management happens through the cloud environment. And if you look at some of the use cases here, these are real models which you can literally deploy out of the box. So we've made it easy for you to take some of these models and literally within 10 minutes do things like counting how long people are spending in the queue. Are they maintaining social distancing? What is the kind of um, accuracy of these models is, is something that's sent to you. If you look on the right hand side, we've got parking space detection. So a lot of vision based capability here. Um, workers working in a danger zone must have a hard hat on if they go into that red area. And of course, we've got some surveillance and security, which is another popular use case. We call these live video analytics scenarios, which typically happen at the edge. So now you know what it can do. Let's actually show you how easy it is to get started. So enough marketing, and let's actually have some look at the slides. So out of the box, the first thing you're going to do is basically get the device. And if I can just bring this round and show you, um, you're going to hook the device up. I've hooked it up to a speaker over here, and I've got my camera covered with my very secure camera cover, as you can see over there. And I've got the box or the carrier board, which has a UTP so socket plus some USBs, which are connecting basically a USB-C over here and a USB cable to the Azure um, Ear module or the Azure Audio module. Now, once you get that set up, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to enable the Wi-Fi and to get that onto your Wi-Fi. Now, I've, I've skipped this step because I, I really want to get through as much of the demo as possible. But the onboarding experience literally takes a few minutes. Once you get to this particular portal, what you will do is you'll say, OK, connect it up to my Wi-Fi. You'll choose which Wi-Fi networks are available. And I'm going to skip that. Then you're going to agree to the terms and conditions. Then you're going to set up your SSH login. So you're going to say things like root and give it your super secret password. Um, I've done this already, so I don't want to do it again. And then you're going to choose, if this is a new device, then you're going to need to hook it up to IoT Hub and to your Azure subscription. So if I want to choose an Azure subscription, then you know I've got a choice of a bunch of subscriptions, which I've already worked on, and an Azure IoT Hub that is needed for this to work. So that's about all you do as the out-of-the-box experience. It's only going to take you a couple of minutes, and you should be up and running. Once you've done the out-of-the-box experience, then we can basically close that down. You will want to head over to Azure Percept. So inside my Azure portal, OK, I hope many of you spend a lot of time over here inside your portal. Um, there is a new icon, which is called Azure Percept Studio. Now, from the Percept Studio, when you've done the setup and the installation, you will see something called a device. So this is where all of my Azure Percept cameras and speech devices. Every time I set this up, I get a new device which I can look at. And the first thing you're going to want to do is, well, you know, out of the box, what do I get? Well, you get a camera which is already enabled. So we've got vision. You've also got some speech. And if you look at the vision, the first thing you're going to want to do is, well, let's have a look at the live stream and check that the live stream works. And of course, I get a link over here, which will allow me to see my live stream which I've already prepared over here. But you'll notice this is on my local network. OK, so I don't need an Azure connection. This is not streaming from Azure. This is streaming over my local network, over an RTSP connection. And in this case, a little HTTP server. And of course, it's, it's blanked off. But you can see it's doing vision detection without actually having to do too much work. And if I put a cell phone there, it's telling me, you know, there's a cell phone in there, and it's 57 probable that that is actually a cell phone. So um, look how easy it is to get that model up and running. But, you know, that model isn't great because 
you know, at the end of the day, it does basic object detection. And you may want to do more than that. And in that case, what I would recommend to you is you have a look at the deploy sample models. Now, what I've deployed here is the general object detection. But as you saw in the demos before, we have built in models which will actually take the live stream and process it to do people detection, to do um, items on a shelf detection. So if you want to check for spoilage of bananas, for example, and the bananas are going brown, you might want to have that as your use case. Or perhaps you want to have a garage and you're detecting users coming in and out and you want to open the garage door when a particular license plate is, is made visible. Maybe that will be a bit of a security risk because you might want to ask for another form of authentication as well. So I can easily deploy those models. Um, I'm going to deploy a model which I've already built. Um, and the reason I'm deploying it now is because this model is it's about 80 megs in size and it can take some time to actually deploy. Um, and you can see I've trained it a couple of times. So I'm just going to let that model run off and deploy. And I'm going to take you back a step now to show you how I actually built that model. Now, back in Percept Studio, and I'm going to try and go slowly through this so that you all get a chance to see and, and copy this at a later date. But if you have a look inside Vision, I actually have this project called Learn ASL. Now, how did that get there? Well, luckily, when you start Percept Studio, you get this opportunity to create new prototypes or view sample applications. Now, sample applications are quite interesting, people counting. These are all deployable via ARM templates into your Azure subscription. Of course, you need the hardware for this to work, but they're a little bit advanced. So let's go back a step and let's just have a look at how we can actually create things which are a little bit more simple. So you can try out new vision models. And this is what we just saw before, where I can actually choose my multiple devices and actually deploy one of those models. That's not going to take any training. That's out of the box, guaranteed to work. And we've done all of the training for you. But maybe you want to do things like checking if your masks in production are coming out with defects. Or maybe you want to check color of Lego bricks. Well, what I wanted to do was create my own app, which is a little bit more unique. And so you can give your app a name. My app name goes over here, typically without any spaces. You put in a description. And here you'll start to notice I choose cognitive services as my, my resource. So this is an Azure service, which I'm already leveraging, which is created in my subscription. And then I have to choose, is it object detection or is it image classification? Well, I'm not quite sure, but you know, if it's me trying to recognize a picture of a circle, great, I would choose image classification. If it's object detection, then maybe I want to choose that because I'm going to be you know, doing some gestures in front of the camera and trying to get it to recognize them. And then the next thing I have to choose is you know, how am I actually going to do my, my object optimization? Is it by accuracy or is it by low latency? Can I have multiple tags per image? Um, probably this would, would, would help solve some of my problems looking at it now. But you know, I'm going to be doing sign language. What I would really want to do is teach my Azure Percept how to do American Sign Language. And I chose American Sign Language because it's very much one-handed. So it's easy for me to use the mouse and do the sign language at the same time. So when I'm ready from that and I've created everything that I need, I could typically save that project and I could be off and running. But I'm not going to actually create that project. I'm actually going to show you the project which I already created a few minutes um, earlier. So once you create the project, the first thing you've got to do is train it. Now, training an image recognition is not something trivial. You have to do this sometimes in the environment that you're using it in different environments. And then you want to deploy it onto the hardware. You need to train it and retrain it. You need to make sure that the models stay fresh. So I'm choosing my Azure Percept devices. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the um, automatic camera capture to capture a bunch of images. So let's say I capture images every five seconds and I capture five images. And what I want to do is I want to set up some retraining. This is actually interesting. So I've deployed model four, but I want to only capture stuff which is really kind of poorly trained. So everything below 50%, I want to retrain because my model might not be performing very well. So that's how I would actually do the retraining. 
Um, and then what I can do is I can just basically set off the camera to actually do that retraining. And I would hold out my hand in front of the camera and actually start getting it to be trained. And so, you know, I could do various hand signals in front of it and every five seconds let it, um, you know, do, do, do particular image capturing. And when I'm done with that automat automatic capture, um, I think I have to actually set it off. Um, it would help if I actually press the button. Um, the image capturing is now in progress and it's hopefully capturing a bunch of um, hand gestures which I'm using um, in order to retrain my model. And I've just got to make sure I keep things still uh, every five seconds. Of course, I could use the web stream if I wanted to. Um, and the web stream is already trained, as you'll notice, it recognizes a bunch of stuff. Um, I'm going to try and do my live long and prosper. Um, and of course, there you go. You can see that uh, I'm, I'm not much of a Trekkie over here, but it says 97%, you must be Mr. Spock over there. So that's how I train or capture the images, but that's not the end of the story. Now I need to open up custom vision in order to do the training, okay? So I can open up custom vision, and what I will see when I'm in custom vision is all of those images which I've trained it on. And you can see, live long and prosper. I did some training with my son because he's much better than me. And whenever I did the training, I had to use a, a little elastic band to get that thing working. Um, but now I've got some untagged images. So I've got some images which are garbage. I'm going to get rid of these. No need to train those. Let's just delete them off. And I've got some more which are, you know, this is an, uh, uh, one which I've already done. So let's see if we can automatically detect that. Um, unfortunately, yeah, it thinks it's R. Excellent. So the current threshold was nine, and it says that is actually American Sign Language for R. So I can say confirm that and tag it. It's not a U, but it's definitely an R. And you can see now the images start vanishing as and when everything is working fine. So let's just delete some of those off. Um, delete this one off as well. And let's have a look at the last one over here. And it's automatically tagging now that that is live long and prosper. So that's fantastic. So retraining the model after a couple of iterations does get easier and easier. And uh, yeah, the last one seems it's uh, struggling a little bit with it. But of course, I can just tag it myself. I can just say, OK, do that, type live, and let's prosper. And now you'll notice I've got no untagged images, and I've got even more images. But look at the distribution. You need a minimum of 15 in order to train the model. If you don't have 15 images, it will not let you press the train button over here. Um, so what I did was I basically trained it up with 30, and I chose a couple of letters that I was actually interested in. And once you're done and you've trained it, here you can now choose quick training, which will take approximately five to 10 minutes, or I can use some you know, serious Azure power to train my, my, my model with much, much more accuracy, depending on how much I want to spend. And it will send me a notification back when everything has been trained. Now, because the demo is a little bit short, what I now want to do is after I've trained it, I want to have a look at the performance of iteration number four. And you notice that you know, I've got quite a good spread over here. Um, if you look at iteration number one, um, I had very unbalanced data, but by iteration number four, my precision is pretty good. So it pretty much guesses the right thing. It pretty much guesses when it had to guess the right thing that it actually guessed it right. And of course, we've got the mean average position as well, which will tell you the overall object detector performance across all of the tags. So it's a pretty good model. Now that model has been stored both on the device at this point, but also in Azure Cognitive Services. So I can take this particular model and I can run this through something like Postman. So you'll notice over here, I've got exactly the same Azure Cognitive Services running. I've got my key, which you can now use and inside the body, I've actually uploaded a picture. So let's just select a file from here. And let's pick, I don't know, let's pick the live long and prosper one again for a second time. And now what I want to do is send it to the model and see if that model is actually working. And you'll notice down here now, I can actually see the results. Whoops, live long and prosper. 
Um, and it detected it multiple times. And it says 57%, that's what I think you were looking for. Now, if you're not a postman kind of person, um, you can do a quick test. And here you can just actually use the browse file. Um, and now I'll choose another image, this one over here. And now it says, I think that's an R, or maybe it's a U, or maybe it's a B. So, you know, it's, it's getting a little bit um, um, confused. So it might suggest that I need to do some more training on that. Um, and then you can have a look at some of the predictions. These were the ones which I've just done. And as you can see, 85% that that was live long and prosper and 47% that that was a, um, the, a, the letter R. Now, once I'm ready from all of this, the next thing I want to do is deploy that model. So I want to actually push it out to my Azure Percept device. And this is what I did earlier on, which I told you I would need some time to do. And I can push any iteration onto the Percept device. And you can see the performance and the image count. And then I would just press down here to actually deploy that model onto the Edge device. And that will take care of packaging up the model, describing the manifest, and putting it onto the device as it should be um, sent. Now. The first thing you're going to be interested in is, you know, well, what's the telemetry look like when I get back things from the, um, the, the, the deployment? So if I bring up my web stream over here um, and also bring up the telemetry at the same time, let's just detach this one. Um, let's do this. Let's push that model over there. OK, and let's have a look at some of the telemetry. So if we have a look at the telemetry that we're getting back from this device, the easiest place to go and see that is go back to devices. Now I'm going to show you how to actually do something useful with, the, with, with all that telemetry which is, which is being streamed back. Now, the first thing I want to do is have a look at the vision device. And eventually, it'll connect. I told you with demos, there's always a risk of uh, things taking some time. Um, but there is the view live telemetry. And there is my stream. And now if I do something like this, there's the U. And hopefully in here we see, if I can stop this in time, U. So I'm actually getting back that telemetry in a live stream. Now, in order to work with the telemetry a bit better, I used IoT Explorer. And I just basically hooked up to the IoT endpoint. I'm not going to show you my credentials, but I could actually grab those credentials from the IoT endpoint. And then what I can do is I can work with that, and I can see exactly the same telemetry coming in over my device. Now, the advantage of having it over here is that I can actually grab that telemetry, and I can pause it, and uh, I can do some interesting things with it. Now. The telemetry is good, and I said, you know, maybe not everybody is a programmer on this call, but eventually the telemetry kicks in, and you can see now I've got the messages popping up, and I can actually grab what those messages look like. And what I decided to do was say, well, you know, wouldn't it be cool if I had um, a service such as Azure Logic Apps, which took some information and took the device telemetry and took the device telemetry and um, you know, did something with it. So what I'm going to do is um, show you now all of that telemetry flowing. So this is the Azure Ear telemetry. Um, one second. I just got to get back to my cues. And here you can see the eye telemetry. This is the telemetry coming in, the raw telemetry, okay? which is the, the, uh, the actual message itself. And then what I do is I transform it into American Sign Language. And as you can see over here, live long and prosper, and you and B, and all of that information is now being taken into an Azure queue. So if I was to try and do, um, let's try and see if we can get this to send a new message. Um, and at some point, we will notice that the queue is being filled up with some data, and that is being processed and sent to here. OK, now this doesn't actually have any messages in it at the moment. But whilst that's actually gathering the telemetry, let's just have a look at what's happening behind the scenes. I've got a logic app, OK? And that logic app is taking apart that telemetry. So basically, what's happening is that message, 
that we saw is being placed in an Azure queue. And then what I'm doing is I'm passing that data using the schema, which says that there's going to be a body in there, there's going to be a bounding box, there's going to be you know, a certain type of JSON schema, which will then give me the message. And then I will extract from it the label. So the innermost part of that telemetry, I want to take out and I want to put that on a queue. And if you look down here, there's the letter E coming out of that. Okay. Now, the body is a little bit fancy. Okay. The body of the message going to IoT Hub is actually base64 encoded. So when I actually paste that in, this is what you get a neural network with E of confidence, this and another E, because sometimes it spots two items at once. Okay. So I need to somehow filter that logic out. And like I said, this is not production code. I would never trust me, myself to write production code. Um, but I just wanted to do this, you know, without any, um, any coding experience. And so what I did was I did a little if condition and I said, you know, if the label comes down and the confidence is higher than the last one, then always store the last thing with the highest confidence and then shove that into a queue and then delete the message off the queue. So if I go back to my Azure Percept telemetry, the raw telemetry will empty out as time goes by and the ASL messages will start filling up. So live long and prosper, E, E, E is all over there. So that's a great way to fill it up. But how did the information get there in the first place? Well, we need to go a little bit deeper under the covers. And I really want to go behind the scenes so you appreciate what we are doing inside, our, inside Azure Percept. So we're going to go out to the IoT hub, which is driving this um, inference engine. And so inside here, I have an IoT hub called Azure 365 Percept. And it has an endpoint, and it's got a bunch of modules, as you'll notice here. These are all containerized and running on my um, my my connect my uh, Azure Percept hardware. And if I actually wanted to have a look at some of the um, endpoints and the device twins, as you can see over here, I've got the ability to have a look at, you know, how am I configuring the camera, for example? I've got raw stream enabled. I could actually switch off the RTPS, RTSP feed uh, on, on, on this particular device by playing around with some of the um, device twin information. Carl? Yeah. Sorry to, to inter in, uh, interrupt you. Uh, for old blind people like me, can you zoom in a bit? Old people like you. There you go. So there Amazing. Is the, Thank there you. There is the capability. Because it's an RTPS T feed, it's available to everybody on the network, but I can actually disable that. And you know, without enough time to do this, I would just have to put false and I would stop people from doing this. As you can see, this feed is a, a raw feed. And probably if I do this, actually let's do the demo. Come on, why not? The demo gods are maybe with me today. Maybe they're not. As soon as I save that and go back to this feed now, the feed is jammed and I've just switched off my feed. So, you know, poor old VLC now doesn't have the ability to see the raw feed and bang, I've broken it, which is exactly what I wanted to do. But outside of playing with this, um, what's really important is, sorry, with the, with the Azure device twin, um, look at this over here. This is the module URL. This is what I deployed to my edge device. Okay, so I deployed to the device a package which looks something like this. So if I go into my downloads and have a look at this, this is the package which I downloaded earlier. Okay, so it's 100 and something megs. And what's interesting is it's got all of my labels, you know, A, B, E, N, live long and prosper. This is my, this, this is my tagging now. This is how the model got built. So there's a a manifest file, um, which you see over here, which basically says, listen, I'm going to deploy to the Azure Santa Cruz device a model zip, okay, some labels and a bunch of other stuff using OpenVINO. And what that means is if you don't want to use cognitive services, you can roll your own image recognition um, models onto the device as well. And the good thing is 
you could actually change these to other different um, uh, different providers. In fact, this is a little look behind the scenes, you know, of, of actually how things are running and what models we support. And if I'm not mistaken, maybe further down here, no, we don't have the models, but I was going to show you something rather cool, but we'll we'll save that for later. Um, so yeah, that's a great way of ha actually having a look at the um, the different models being deployed. But what I'm really interested in inside the IoT Hub, which is this one over here, I'm going to slow down a little bit, is, you know, this is a regular IoT Hub ingesting messages. So, you know, I'm generating a message, you know, once a second. That's it's, it's not going to consume my daily quota, so we're, we're well within limits. But what I wanted to do is take that telemetry and put it somewhere. And for that, I'm using Event Grid. And as you can see over here, I'm capturing eye telemetry and ear telemetry. Now, it's important to have them separate because they actually get outputted inside the same stream to IoT Hub. Now, how did I split them up into separate queues? Well, what you actually have to have a look at is basically you could do something like this. If I say uh, add a new event subscription, I could say call this capture telemetry, um, probably without a space. And then what I want to do is I want to say capture only the telemetry. So don't capture when the device is connected and all of that extra junk, but you've got to capture something. And then tell it where you want to put it. Well, I want to put it on a storage queue. And that queue that I want to put it on is going to be called doo -doo 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 -doo, Azure Percept. And as you see over here, those same thing, Azure Ear and Azure Eye. So I want to put it in my Azure Eye. Now, that will save me everything, which is going to be too much. So what I did was, in order to kind of get the telemetry down, I added some filters to my event grid. Okay, so here I'm using event grid to capture. And if you have a look at some of the filters, what's interesting is you've got the subject begins with. And I've said whenever the subject begins with Azure I, capture it to this particular queue and ignore anything which is empty. Okay, now if you're wondering, you know, how was how how were you supposed to know that? What I did was I captured a few um telemetry sessions before the session. Okay, so if you have a look at what the telemetry actually looks like, this is what the raw telemetry looks like. And here you can see the Azure subject. That's when I get a speech message, and that's the payload, which is base64 encoded. And then this is the Azure I module, which is again a base64 encoded um, payload. So that was the event grid, which sent it to the Azure queue, which I could then at a later date process. Now, the last part of the story wouldn't be complete without giving you a little SSH demo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to SSH into my Azure Percept device kit. Okay, so this was that local port, um, which was running on my network, which I'm going to kind of go in with my super secret password, which is really long. And then what I'm going to do is I can actually tell you, well, look at what's running on there. And if you notice, these are all the modules that we used, one for Azure I. So I've got the IoT Edge um, Docker container. I've got some Azure I modules. I've got some Azure um, Speech modules running. And I can see and control all of these. So I could even go in and have a look at the image list, for example, and see where those images are coming from. So this is not some kind of closed box but if you are not intending to go deep, you can use the device. But if you want to go deep and actually monitor the device, you can actually have a look at what, um, um, what version of Linux we're actually running over here. And this may be the first time people are seeing this, but this is actually CBL Mariner running um, as a Microsoft distribution of Linux. And you can go off and have a look at Mariner and play with Mariner because this is all open source and all available to you. So it's a lot of fun to play with and actually have a look at what's going on. And of course, you know, you can log into these containers and, and play around with them and actually deploy stuff manually as well. Now, 
we spent a lot of time on the vision side of things, but we didn't spend much time on the speech side. So I'm going back into Percept Studio, and I'm really kind of taking you on a long run here and a really long demo. I hope everybody's still enjoying this. But I just want to kind of squeeze in a little bit of um, speech capabilities because the voice assistance on this thing is, is just amazing. And as you can see over here, I, I've already created and, and, and deployed a speech demo for you. And you know that's easy to do. If I wanted to do that, I would just come over here under demos and tutorials, and then I would say, create for me a custom speech assistant, and we'll have a choice in just a second of four predefined or canned scenarios. Um, I've gone into the wrong place, which is typical for me when I do my demos. Um, here they are. A hospitality demo, yeah, kind of interesting. Switch on the lights, switch off the lights, Alexa do this, Alexa do that, or Cortana. Um, but what about an inventory demo? So let's have a look at how we can actually control a warehouse using Azure Percept. Now I could deploy this, but it takes some time. And because I know people are impatient and they don't want to see things being deployed, what we can do is we can just go and have a look at what I've already deployed. And inside speech, you'll notice I've got some keywords and the keywords are assistant, and I like this one the most because I'm an Ironman fan, so I put in Jarvis over there. We'll use Jarvis later on, um, but let's actually launch the solution. So behind the scenes, there's a lot of cognitive services running over here. So let's, let's actually test this out. Computer, help. Computer, help. She's woken up. This is a command and control inventory demo. You can add blue, green, or yellow boxes and remove the boxes. You can also query the state of the warehouse. Computer, deliver two yellow boxes. Receive two yellow boxes. Computer, sell all inventory. Shift all items. Awesome. Yes, that's great. Computer, reset. Now, of course, it'll be even more fun if we use Jarvis. Now, I hope this one works because I only just trained him up recently. And it's actually going to deploy that and the lights are going to blink over here. And once that's actually deployed, I think, is it deployed or is it still deploying? Okay, it's still deploying the raw percept telemetry. Okay, the keyword is Jarvis, deliver two boxes. Jarvis, deliver two yellow boxes. So it's not going to wake up. Damn you, Jarvis. Um, well, normally it would work. I'm not sure why the um, engine hasn't deployed the, the, the model yet for the, for the keyword. But of course, I can train up as many keywords as I want. Um, and I can actually use some of the speech services which are sitting inside Azure. Now, if you're wondering finally what's happened behind the scenes and how many things have been deployed, I've deployed everything into a resource group, um, as you can see over here. I've got a resource group called Percept RG, and you can see a lot of the things which have been used to create the, the demos you've seen. So I've got some storage accounts, I've got some speech services, I've got some Azure cognitive services for vision, I've got some of my logic apps which I was using, um, some Azure serverless functions running over here as well. So the good thing is you can get at all of this stuff and play around with it without actually having to, you know, um, you can actually get deeper under the covers in order to understand what's happening. In fact, if you were looking at the speech, I can actually go to Speech Studio and have a look at that very same demo. If I have a look at my speech resources, that's the Percept Inventory one. And I can go there now and have a look at some of the commands. And you'll notice some of those commands I was using are 
very, very familiar to anybody who's used Lewis and our speech services in, um, in Azure. In fact, we've got a bunch of endpoints which you can connect up to, and there was the help which I executed, and when I asked her to do help, um, this is the resetting of the inventory, and when I say ship inventory, this is basically what, um, what are the commands that are being accepted. So ship all items um, would actually um, pr process that inventory and send it all out. So I can add commands. I can enrich this demo. None of it is covered up. I can train it and give it new commands, and I can enable these starter or boiler point, bo boilerplate code in order to do much, much more things that I need. So can you imagine combining speech with, um, with Azure Vision at the edge? I want to wrap up with literally a call to action. Um, the device is not available in everybody's region as of today, but you can pre-order. So I do advise you to have a look at aka.ms aka AI at Edge. Um, follow me on YouTube. I'm going to be doing some more demos on this, but you are literally the first people to see Azure Percept doing sign language. Um, if you like the demo, drop me a line um, and drop the show a line to say that you enjoyed it. But order your kit. Start playing around with some of the um, um, models and, and actually learn about how Azure does security from security to service and how that AI can flow right the way across, as we say, from edge to silicon service, all in one nicely transparent package. And with that, Rasmus and Sherry, I'd like to give it over to you guys, just in case there are any more questions. Thanks, Carl. Amazing. Great, great demo. We love demos uh, here. And, and there is actually a couple of questions. So the okay, first one, get... almost, yeah, you almost answered the first one here, but uh, but let's, let's take it. Uh, so yeah, at the moment, kind of it's, it's a, it's a, so in order to do these demos, you need the Percept Dev Kit. It, it costs around $300, so it's, it's not, I wouldn't say it's cheap. Um, you can use Raspberry Pi um, with Lobe. Uh, you can get some similar uh, setup uh, to, to that. Um, but this is actually a, a, distinguish, a, a, a different stack altogether. So this is, like I said, this is running Mariner. This is our shipped hardware. It's in partnership with Arrow Industries and a bunch of other device manufacturers. So, you know, we are working to increase the portfolio of cameras supported, of Azure um, ear modules supported, or Azure audio, et cetera. So you can do some of the similar demos with a Raspberry Pi and uh, drop me a note if you, if you are interested. Like I said, Lobe, L-O-B-E, is a quick way to get started. Thanks for that. Any other questions? You're on mute, Sherry. Yeah. Thank Better. you. Yeah, I need the sign language. So uh, we have the we have Jonah actually um, here that uh, she was the previous speaker of the Dev Show actually the, for the previous episode. So she said that this technology is interesting to me. My youngest sister is Dev and uses ASL. I'm a .NET software developer who likes Azure and also learning ASL. Awesome. So. And uh, so she's interested in develop with this kit. I wonder if it's possible to use Azure Precept Dev Kit with Azure Functions and or Azure Durable Functions. So Jonah, I was preparing a serverless functions demo, um, but I stuck with the no code for everybody. Um, you can get much better performance with a serverless application hitting that uh, service bus endpoint. So take the telemetry, put it on a service bus, and then use Azure's functions with triggers HTTP triggers or a service bus event trigger, and then send that, you know, process that sign language. And what I was going to do was, um, if you have a look at some of my pages, I'm actually processing it with a Azure uh, Power Apps to actually read the queues and actually read those queues out of it. So you're, you're really kind of in line with what I wanted to build. Um, I just didn't have enough time to build the demo. But yeah, that's a, that's a fantastic use case. So that's great. amazing. Thanks, Carl. And uh, and then there is uh, yeah some some good uh, yeah shout outs to you here as well. There actually like one one more question from Hopan. So almost said it right. You 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 had the link yeah. before. 
Yeah, so AKA um, AI at Edge. Um, so A I A T E D G E will take you to the to the single place. Um, <laughs> AKA MS. I can just bring it back up on my slides. Probably easier. Just head over here, um, and that should take you to a website which will take you to everything that I've demoed, as well as a bunch of interesting information. So unboxing and ordering and everything is available over here. Cool. Thanks a lot, uh, Carl. Please stay on uh, here. And uh, okay. Sherry, Sherry, do you want to start out uh, the wrap up? Yes. Um, I actually I put the, the the slide already here. Uh, so while Rosmus was on vacation, we actually released the new seasons of. Uh, Azure Heroes Learner badges. So it means it. that yes, that's true. <laughs> so it means that if you go to the to the website, you can see that all totally new um, uh, type of badges. And we also migrated Azure Heroes from Ethereum to something called JumpNet to be more green and more sustainable. So the way that is different is that in Ethereum, everything works with the with the miners. Whereas in JumpNet, it is not like that. So it is going to be green and I'm super happy about it. So yes, if you get a uh, scan this QR code, if it's the very first time that you, you're, you're uh, getting an Azure Heroes, you need to download an, um, an app, which is done by our uh, partner engine uh, to to uh, actually to have these NFT tokens uh, secure. And remember, to have a password because uh, because uh, that password you will need it forever. Okay, and um, the other thing is that if you want to know more about this uh, program, you can go to aka.ms slash azure.heroes to see all of uh, all type of badgers. And then you can nominate yourself uh, and your community friends for some of these badgers because you can be community heroes, you can be content hero, or if you speak as the show, like Carl, he's going to receive a kudos badge from us at the end of this show as well. So, so check out uh, the hashtag and see that what are actually what the community is talking about us as well. And both Carl and ourselves, we would like your feedback. So anything. For Carl, we will pass on to him. And anything about the show, please let us know. This is your show and also what you want to hear. So you can use the QR code here. You can uh, use Twitter. You can use the chat. So just pass on all the feedback you have. Um, and uh, one thing is that actually, Carl, I want you to choose oh. questions. So there were such good questions. They were all good questions. but. <laughs> I, I must say I have a soft spot for the ASL one and the serverless. So Jonah, who picked up on the serverless way forward, kudos for that question because I think that that was very sensible. The the, the Pi one was a very close second. So, <laughs> so Jonah, um, you know how to reach out to us. So uh, so reach out to us to get your swag box as well. And the other way to get the swag box is by scanning this QR code and then give us a feedback. So we will pick one of the <laughs> yeah, <laughs> give can give feedback, feedback to your <laughs> so, so yes. Uh, so let us get uh, scanning. Let us, yes. <laughs> okay. And upcoming events. Yeah. We have a bunch of them. The very first time, which is uh, which actually uh, relevant, is on the, in two days from now. Uh, if you go to uh, the link which is stated there, you can join uh, the session with uh, with Christopher. He's actually normally talking about the IoT, but this time he is talking about uh, the user feedback as a part of DevOps. So this is going to be a really interesting uh, topic, and I personally looking forward to have this session. So I'm going to also send you the follow-up email with all the links as well. And if you're into data warehousing, then you should join us next week. It's not the 5th of May, but it's the 4th. I can see the cherry <laughs> nicely hidden the, the error here. So, 
So it's uh, Tuesday, the same time as usual. So next week, see you talk with Jens talking about data warehousing. So may the force be with you. Do you have some special t-shirt to wear on that day for Smooth? Oh, let's see. Yeah, but if you come let's on see. the... Oh, so the other way. To the fifth. There will be... No, this is also May the 4th, actually. So our uh, sister uh, meetup group uh, on the Blue Fragment, they have actually an IoT talk. Uh, I'm going to send a link to, to you all later on as well. So how to use the, the DMI, which is a Danish uh, weather. Is that true? So, so Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so so uh so how to how you can use that one. That is actually going to be a cool one. But May 5th or Cinco de Mayo, we are going to have a lot of tacos and uh secrets. Uh um I mean there are going to be open source secrets on Azure user group. So this is actually going to be a really good uh, session as well as a half a day, like a mini conference with a lot of really cool um, cool um, talks and a lot of swags, I can say. Ooh. And, and Gustav Kaleta speaking. So I can attest to him as a very entertaining <laughs> speaker. <laughs> yes, he is indeed. Yes. And with that, thanks to everyone for joining and thanks to Carl for speaking. It's been amazing. See you. Thanks all for having time. me on the show. It was a real pleasure. Yeah, thanks, thanks for joining lot. us. Have a good evening, everyone. Bye. See Take you. Care. Bye bye. bye.